Dr. Lisa here, welcoming you to an episode of Owning Her Health with the lovely Dr. Tracy Hill. Tracy is a doctor of physical therapy and certified master neuro coach. Um, she has been a physical therapist for many years, moved out of orthopedics, sports, medicine programs, and she's very active herself, runs every morning. If you look at her Instagram, you will see all of her her little workout tips and things like that. Um, you know, I often would see her talk to her. Uh, she'd be on our calls early in the morning with Mind Body Brand Academy back in the day when I used to have them twice a day <laughs> on our lives. Um, I'd have an 8 a.m. and she was out in Arizona and she'd be kind of listening in, I guess, even on her early, early morning runs out there. So she's very committed and she has grown over the years. I've known her into her own programming. Limitless Health is a program her and Dr. Jessica Midkiff have put together. So these two doctors of physical therapy got together, got into the wellness aspect of really owning your health, which is why she's on here and we'll be discussing that today. And it really is a program about changing your behaviors because she understands, you know, just like uh, that mind-body approach that I'm talking about or that holistic approach really has to come from rewiring your body to even not be addicted to things that are, that are harmful for you. The logic is there, but the behaviors aren't. So if you are somebody who's been uh, battling yourself, the health challenges on and off, you're having successes and then having failures, you're, you're really energy-wise really battling being the mother and, the, and also the warrior yourself trying to get through your own well-being as well as on top of maybe your career, your relationships, things like that. Jessica and Tracy's program, Limitless Health, might be for you. And you can really get a hearing about Tracy's own journey into her own health in this episode of Owning Her Health. So get a listen in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to this episode of Owning Her Health with your host, Dr. Lisa Holland. Join Lisa as she starts the conversation on what it really takes to become a healthy, wealthy, and whole CEO of your life. Listen in to real talk by real lady leaders in all walks of life as they open up on personal health stories, wealth, career, and feminine abundant living. Learn how to grow by owning your body, expanding your mind, and aligning your soul with the purpose only you can pursue in this world. Happiness begins with owning her health right now. This episode. One of the things I love about this podcast is that it really follows my intention to feature the woman behind the brand that she's birthing, behind the business that she's doing, the thought leadership work that she's doing. And I did that purposely because I saw, especially in my sectors that I was working in clinically for many years, women's health and yoga therapeutics, that in these worlds, there were so many wonderful practitioners, but they weren't really getting on the stage. They weren't really, they were, they were years in the business. They had their own methodologies, but they weren't really being able to package and position themselves. And I just felt that we can make such a bigger impact in the world if we could really get ourselves on stages. And that's why I formed My Body Brand Academy, which has run for the past three and a half to four years as a two times a year, eight week accelerator incubator where I would hold you, get you through idea development into cultivating a conversation and then forming a community, which you can then survey, you can get email lists, lead generation, you could basically run, you don't even have to have a business yet, just sort of an idea of what you're trying to form yourself around a conversation, who you are, and from there, sky's the limit. And so now we're really seeing that it is in a creator's economy, and we have to be moving a lot of clinicians over to the creators. Um, we've moved that over now to a whole year development program. I'm going to partner with people uh, for six months straight and then over the next six months get them to that goal where they make double their investment back. So you know, if you invested $5,000, you are done when you get back 10 from that. And if you don't get it, you get to stay into the program. We've done that because it really showed me over an arc of about three years with Mind Body Brand Academy that the people that did the best were the ones that were actually implementing the information. But I know right now, some of you right now are not necessarily that committed. You're not understanding where you quite want to be. And I get it. But considering the fact we're going to a recession, 
profession, considering the fact we need multiple income streams, and considering the fact everybody is online, you need for your mind body a brand. You need a personal brand. You need something that you can plant some seeds into, especially right now, so that you never have to be somebody who's dependent on what's going on in the world, who's dependent on, you know, uh, your bosses or or hospital changes or what's going on in terms of people finding, you know, yoga serious or not, and you're a yoga therapist and they don't understand the difference. It does not matter. When you can carry yourself and you have something to say, you create your community and then you can curve. That's why it's called the curvy hustle in my society. You can curve and you can go into doing whatever it is you want to be evolving into. So if that sounds good for you, but you're not quite ready to maybe meet up with me or fill out an application for the six-month program and then the six months of, of some uh, guidance and mentorship after that to just make sure that you double your money back of investment, then I have a DIY solution. What I've done is I've put together the uh, curriculum for Mind Body Brand Academy. I've given you lifetime access to the portal. You will not be in the live sessions. That's when the real mentorship and where the individual work happens. But you will have the step by step by step, week by week. It's eight modules. You can do it in eight days if you wanted to. I would not recommend that because it's all about implementation. But it has the action steps. It has the step by step, getting your ideas clear, getting the clarity, and then getting that conviction for you to kind of create your own stages and start collecting your leads. So if that's something you want to do, you can look at www.mindbodybrandacademy. Dot com. You can get your DIY version. You can get access immediately to all eight modules, self-paced, do what you need to. And if you do this before the end of the year, because I really, really, really want you not to leave 2022 without some clarity on the bigger picture, what's possible for you. If you do this, I will meet with you for the one hour, $200 bonus to strategize exactly where you are, let you know what modules would be best for you and where it might be really good for you to start getting into a program idea, a platform, a podcast, uh, just even a summit, a summit, a conversation is something you think you're going to be getting into in 2023, then definitely take a look at www.mindbodybrandacademy. I will meet with you. We will get you going. You will have a whole strategy. And who knows, maybe you'll be one of my next guests on the Owning Her Health show before you know it. Great, guys. So as you heard in the introduction, we have a wonderful goddess wisdom, uh, 30 minutes or so chat with the lovely doctor of physical therapy, Tracy Hill. Tracy has been uh, connected to me. She came into my Mind Body Brand Academy, I think, round one or two or three. You were early in there. I think, I think <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So like it was like you, you, we were, you were still working in the clinic. You're kind of needing to... Uh, maybe get a little bit more respect for the contributions that you had made at the time. We were both still married. It was completely different life. Um, and a so lot has happened. Yep, a lot has happened. Um, you went on to really connect that mind body piece and create the brand. So you were the walking, you know, Academy graduate there, a mind body brand from mind body brand Academy. Um, so I love what you've been doing. I know you partnered with a, a friend turned partner, Jess, Jessica Metcalf, who also is, I believe a doctor of physical therapy, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you guys have really been able to move on and be, you know, neuro coaches and blend that in. And of course, we love to feature here all the different ways we can take our life experience, our work experience, switch and career pivot, our goals in life and really get things done. And I love that we're going to discuss with your limitless health program, how you are filling in that gap between what we know we should do to get success in our bodies, right? Because we're not going to have success anywhere else mm -hmm. while we're sitting in stress and survival inside yes. and in our lives and in our families. And so relationship, leadership, entrepreneurship, they all mix together. So the gap between what we know we should do for success in our body and what we actually do. So thank you for being here, Tracy Hill. Tell us a little bit, how the heck did you get from 
whatever you were interested in, let's say 20 years ago, <laughs> just into being a physical therapist, into being, you know, more into the coaching and the health and wellness, because that's really where health pros need to go, right? Yes. Tell yes. us your story. Wow. What an evolution it has been mm -hmm. from, you know, the clinical traditional healthcare model. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I found you, I didn't realize that my life was in turmoil or mm -hmm. I did, but I didn't, I didn't want to admit it. And I'm a really good push through, just get it done and get the job done. I'm really good at that. And um, so it was, I don't know, it was perfect timing, God's timing, all the things of mm -hmm. like, I literally didn't know anything about you when I bought your program. It just goes to show sometimes when you just need to hear the right thing, mm. you must have said the right thing. I don't know what you said to me, but it must have been what I needed at the time. And I knew that I did not fit in the clinical environment anymore, but I didn't quite know what that looked like because I, I knew what I didn't like about the clinic is I can get your pain better. I can help your injuries. And I had evolved to working with a lot of women and a lot of postpartum women and um, the prenatal, the postnatal, and that opened up a whole different avenue of um different stuff that I did not quite expect. You know, I was just expecting to help some physical stuff. Mm -hmm. And I realized that it was opening up this whole other can of worms with these women who were just feeling lousy in their bodies. You know, some with pain, some with just, just discouragement and hearing the stories of you don't understand what I deal with at home and I don't have time. And, and it was, it was that cycle. My whole career in the clinic was like, thank you so much for getting me better. But then they can't stay consistent to do the things that make you better. And so then I end up seeing you, you know, in six months yep. to a year and well, were you doing the exercises? Were you doing what I educated you to do? Well, no. Well, why not? Well, you know, life and this and the kids and all of these things. And what I realized was that there's a disconnect in really what we believe about our bodies and what we believe that we want. Everyone wants to feel good. You know, I don't think anyone's sitting around thinking, I just want to feel crummy all day and right. feel like garbage in my body. We all want to feel good. And deep down inside, you know, we all know things that are better for us, better for our bodies, better for our energy than other things. But why can't that, you know, that why can't that stick and be consistent? And so I want to help women blend this brain science piece that is missing from the component of health that we don't touch on so that they can stay, feel successful in their bodies, stay consistent without this need for willpower, restriction, motivation, and ending this start, stop, stuck cycle that just goes on and on. And while I was hearing, you know, these stories from so many women about all the reasons why they couldn't exercise, I knew that my life was not in good, like my home environment was not in a good place. But I always questioned like, what the heck? How come I'm still staying consistent? Mm -hmm. Oh, my whole world was swirling around around me. I didn't have any support at home. I had two small children. Mm -hmm. Why? Like, what was I doing right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like, I wanted to shake some of these women and be like, and you know, when you first yeah. met me, my, my instinct is just right. suck it up, get yeah. over it. Like, Talk about is, the lone wolf. Talk about the is, lone wolf. Tracy, that wants is her. me. <laughs> that is me. I'm like, chop, chop, get it done and just like get over it. Yeah, life's hard. And, but I realize that, 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 that's a good quality that I have, but it's also a, a quality that needed to be refined because life is hard. You know, like transitions do happen, hard things happen that bam, they slam these roadblocks. And it's in those roadblocks, in those transitions that people fall apart and their health falls apart. But it's right. also in those transitions that your health needs to be solidified. And that's why I want to help women create, put their health on this automatic program versus, oh, I have to work out. Oh, this is something I have to do when it is just, and that's what I realized after, after I got certified in this neuro coaching, 
I realized like, this is it. Like, this is what I'm talking. This is what I wanted to say. I just didn't know that that's what I wanted to say is Mm -hmm. we have to make our health program automatic because otherwise it's just another checklist on my 8,000 checklist things that I need to do today. And so when the kids are sick, when you're injured, when things are crumbling around in your relationships or whatever it is, when those things happen, you're too dang overwhelmed, too tired to cook a healthy meal or to exercise because it's another thing uh, that I have to do. But it, when it is part of your automatic program and it is just running the show, that's when you show up consistently, no matter what, that you don't have to like force yourself to do it. Love and it. that's the key. Love it. So I'm hearing a couple of things there. There's the how we can really come compartmentalize things and and to some extent that is our survival way that we mm-hmm. that we work but if we really do want to jump to thriving in life we have got to figure out a way to use our operating system for our benefit and so many times we don't and even in your own life you were said you know like it's all and it and it, and it is always the case especially for these medicine women rising right now that are just we we are the walking talk it's like the way we're going to show it is by showing it showing up authentically ourselves but how could you just do that right? Like it's, it's, it's even more ingrained in you when you actually walked it, how we can be very functional working in our excellence in one realm of our life. And then yet, you know, be completely, you know, closed off or ignorant or or just being efficient to the other. And really what I hear is, you know, how could we, life's going to happen. You're speaking of transformation. And this is more than just change, guys, listening to this. This is about transformation. It's different. Transformation means it's like the metamorphosis. The caterpillar is no longer the butterfly. Something's got to die. Something's got to die. So tell me a little bit about um, your program and how it kind of recreates. Because what I'm hearing is there's a new identity here. Yes. Yeah. And so, okay. So first off, we talk about this subconscious, you know, what's running the show and your subconscious is running a good, like 90% Mm -hmm. of everything that you do during the day, which is a good thing. Like you should be glad that you don't have to think about every minute detail of your day. Nobody thinks about brushing their teeth before they leave the house in the morning. It just happens. I don't care how busy I am, my teeth are going to get brushed, right? And so when 90% of our day is being run on the subconscious, we have to think about, well, what is the subconscious telling us? And this is what we don't hear. We don't understand and recognize. And so in our, in our coaching program, we get women to start recognizing, what are these thoughts that I'm telling myself? And so these are thoughts of, Ah, this always happens. See, I can't every time, every time I start, something always comes up, something gets in the way. I can never stay consistent. Oh, every time I work out, I always get injured. And this is why I can't work out. And the time, even the time that your your mom or aunt, somebody told you, oh, honey, just wait till you have kids. You can't take care of yourself. Oh, this is just your genetics. You're just going to be fat. All of these stories, even like I think about when I was a kid, I was told I was not an athlete. I was always picked last on the field. Mm -hmm. And these are stories that shape us, that tell you you're not good enough. You don't belong. You don't belong in the gym. You don't belong in this athlete. I have a client right now who she's wrapping her identity around. I'm an athlete. Yeah, you're an athlete because she never associated herself with that. And so these subconscious stories are running the day. And so if you don't fully dive into these beliefs or these these thoughts, first of all, these thoughts are going to turn into beliefs. And so those beliefs then are going to drive everything that we do. And so if your belief is this is just how I am, like this is just too hard, I something always comes up that I can't stay consistent, then the second that you get motivated and start that new program, that new exercise program, that new diet program, the second that you start, your subconscious is already telling you, this isn't going to work. You've done this before. You've tried it all. 
why even bother? But you you plow through and you get motivated because, you know, we can willpower and we can push through for a long time. But then that thing happens. And then that thought comes up. I told you so. And so what we don't realize is that we're putting the gas pedal and the brake on all at the same time. And so we work with our clients. We take them through this neuro coaching model of, hey, we're going to recognize what are these things that keep coming up. And the key is that you actually have to write them down. And our clients don't like this of writing down what are these thoughts, like these thoughts that say, you're not good enough. You're not an athlete. Um, You're just going to, this is just your body. This is just your genetics. We have them write it down and it feels, it feels yucky to write it down. And so people don't like to write it down. And, but the, the reason that that's important is because the second you write it down, you get it out of your brain. Because if we keep it in the subconscious, and I know I'm 100% guilty of this is, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that thought, got it, check, move on. It's going to stay in our subconscious because again, we're really good at just, okay, yeah, yeah. I write we make okay, logic yeah. out of it, right? Like yeah. you always make logic. You always want to be mm-hmm. right. That's really what you're saying is like, you, we will always make, if we, if we live in a world of black and white, right and wrong, it will, you know, how we lead in one's place, we lead everywhere. So we will then, our thoughts, we have to make them right. Yep. Nobody yeah. wants to and be wrong. So the second that you write it out and you look at it at a piece of paper, it's like, oh, hang on. Let me ask myself, is that 100% true 100% of the time? Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time that I have been consistent in my health? Oh, yeah. I remember this one time and I was killing it. I was rocking it. Okay. Who were you? Like, who was the person during that time? Then you start to see who was that person. And now you get to see, like, is this thought of I'm not good enough? I can never stay consistent. Is this thought helping you? to be consistent? Well, no, because your brain is going to be constantly fighting against itself. This is why it feels so hard to show up day after day of eating right or exercising and doing the things. It feels so hard because you're operating on this program that's saying you can't stay consistent. But if you start looking at these thoughts and asking yourself, hang on, does that serve who I want to be? where I want to go. But we also have to dig in really deep of what do you even want? What does health even look like to you? Because health is going to look different for you in every season. Health looks different when you're 21 years old. Okay. Like there are different drivers when you're 20 versus when you're 40 versus when you have kids versus when the kids are out of the house, all of these seasons. And so we have to rewind and look like what does it, what matters to you right now? Then are those thoughts aligning with that person? Because usually the thought is when I lose weight, then I will be able to do this. Then I will be able, then I will have this, but we have to start with, no, when you become this person, Mm -hmm. then you can do these things. Then you can have these things. It starts with the B Mm-hmm. And that's, it's completely opposite from everything that's being sold in health. It's when you, when you do the thing, when you drop the weight, when you manage the pain, then you can, instead of who are you going to be right now in this process? So now you can, you recognize that person. And now when the ups and downs come, because they're going to come, now you're still able to navigate and shift because you you know that person that you're evolving into versus dang it i screwed up again here we go again back to square one back to rock bottom right and now your brain your brain starts having the proof and the evidence that oh hang on she is someone that can stay consistent she has demonstrated even in the the challenging transitions she showed up it just looks different Right. And that's what I want to help people with. And, and, you know, I love how you're bringing in that, you know, it honestly used to be like, I will say when I was just talking, bringing the yoga into the 
physical therapy or whatever. This is like transpersonal psychology work back then. Now mm -hmm. it's becoming more the norm. But before it was like spiritual voodoo, hoodoo of like yeah. seeing yourself as a different person and then being that different person. And then, you know, then we started making it cool in business. And once money gets involved, then it's, then it's cool and it's culture. But I love how, you know, you're taking some of those same principles of be the person who who grows into being able to do the things that will get that result. Like this is mm -hmm. not rocket science, but as no. simple as it is, it is not easy because like you said, there's those underlying operating systems. So I want to take this a little bit kind of into you. If you could talk to her, what would the woman today be able to whisper into her ear? Because technically we can't. Technically, we can rewrite, like you're saying, we can rewrite the, the story. If you could talk to her, which we all can and reprogram, what is it you're saying today to that, that inner child or inner adolescent or young adult woman that went into a certain mode and it became, you know, her own hell that she had to break through to get to the, even be doing the things you're doing now? You know, what would you say to her? Well, I think one of the biggest things for me was I knew what I didn't want, but I wasn't clear on what I wanted. Mm, that vision. So important. The GPS I, needs to I have I knew. I can tell you all the things that I don't want in my life, in my health, in my family, in how I want to look, in my marriage, all the things, Right. But what is it that I want? And that was that was challenging for me. And I never like I never thought about it mm -hmm. because you don't have to. You just know like, oh, well, I don't want to. Yeah, have because this. you're run and you're this. a runner. So I'll say it this way. You know, runners run for two things. You're either running towards something or you're running away from something. And sometimes and I think that whole lone dog mentality that's like so propagated as the only way to really go, go, go. The unfortunate part is that it's always running away from something. And unless you sit there with someone, and unfortunately that someone sometimes is divorce, is disease, is distress, you know, do we have to go to those friends to meet up on the yellow brick road to like, you know, help us out? <laughs> right. And it goes for all aspects of your life. And so if we talk about health, okay, everyone knows that they don't want to look you know, they don't want to look in the mirror and think, oh, I don't like this person. They might, you know, they might say, I don't want to have pain. I don't want to be fat. I don't want to have no energy. Okay. Yeah, that's great. But what do you want? Right. Even in the traditional physical therapy clinic, you ask a patient, why are you here? Well, because I have pain. Well, yeah. But you know what? Pain is not a problem until it limits your life. We can, because we can handle pain, but it's when it interferes with the things that we love and want to do, then it's a problem. And so, okay, when you're pain free, when you lost the 50 pounds, when whatever, like, what does that bring you? What do you want from that? And that's your vision. Because if you're always chasing what you don't want, your brain's always going to be thinking about what you don't want, right? but it's not clear on what you want. And right. so when you know, when you have this clear why, and you know, with our coaching clients too, we, we go deep into this of, okay, you want this, but why? Oh, well, you know, I want to have more energy. Well, why? Well, when I have more energy, I'm a better mom. Why does that matter? You know? And so we take this layers deep, 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 deep. So then your why is so big that you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. what I want. I want to feel that. I want to taste that every day. And each day I want to align my thoughts and decisions to be one step closer to that. Right. Because you're Knowing always going well, to doesn't have It doesn't happen overnight, but always like, is my focus still going towards being that person? Because mm -hmm. you're always going to end up home. The problem is when you don't really know what your home is. And unfortunately, when you constantly are focusing on what you don't want, that becomes your homing signal. <laughs> and you will mm -hmm. keep going there. Right. 
saying, I don't want it, but you keep going there because where your focus goes, mm -hmm. that's where you end up because we are powerful. And it's safe and comfortable. Yeah. And, and I, I, I even have been saying, you know, I think we're even moving out of the comfort zone. I think we actually have gotten to a consciousness where it's just convenient. Like, I think we yes. actually are not, and we actually know we're not comfortable and now we're like conscious enough to understand we're not even comfortable, but we're, it's so convenient that we literally do it. And then we wonder, why do I have no pleasure? Why does my sex life suck? Why do I have no fun? Why do I, because like you literally mm -hmm. are programming now that convenience is enough. And convenience yeah. isn't set up for quality, guys. Convenience is not set up for quality. No. It might look really pretty, but it's not quality. So I'm going to take and flip that question I asked you, Tracy. If Okay, so now, knowing who you are now, if you guys enact your limitless health, I know you guys got the podcast. Anybody listening, make sure you go on and listen to them for, their, for, for tips over there on that podcast. If you enact that program and it, and, it, and it goes into what your vision is, and in a second, I'm going to ask you, what is the vision for you guys? What is it that that person 10 years down the road, that woman 10 years down the road is now whispering in your ear? What she is whispering in yeah. my ear? If, if the vision is fulfilled, what is she telling you? She's whispering, thank you for changing my life and changing my family's life and changing the trajectory of my life. Because now, 10 years later, she has shown up for herself. She has shown up for her family, which has then shaped her family, which has then shaped her kids. And now starting to create this, this beautiful, you know, domino effect because of all the people that she has touched, because she is now a healthy, well, strong, confident woman. Mm -hmm. And then like, filling in that gap, right? Like how much of that vision can you even bring into that? Because that's another powerful thing, right? Like we can talk to her, like she's here already, right? Say like, I'm already, I am changing people's lives. I am touching, I am mm -hmm. creating that different trajectory. And so I love that. I love how you're imaging that and showing the domino effect, because that's really what happens, right? We work um, with the moms, the women in the corporations, the women in the communities doing things, and then it people are watching them, and it's powerful, yes. and their behavioral change becomes, like, we all say, I don't want to be my parents. And then all of a sudden you wake up one day and you hear your mother or your father coming out of your mouth and you're like, what the hell just happened? Right. right? Like, like it's so important to be a responsible adult. And I, and I don't know about you, Tracy, but I find like we're having trouble doing that because of, we can say it's because of the traumas and the, and the things or whatever, but the reality is like, I hear you, but that's life. Like you were saying, like life took a curve. What are you going to do about Everyone's, it? Everyone has a curveball. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, what are we going to do with it? And your brain's job is to keep you safe, convenient, and comfortable. But like you said, like that's not growth. And so there comes a point where we have to ask ourselves, is this what I want? Is this what I want for 10 years down the road? Is this what I want for 20 years down the road? The trajectory of my children. I was speaking with a woman who was literally terrified that her children were going to hate her when she was an adult or when her children were adults because she didn't like the mom that she was because she was snippy and low energy and grouchy. And it's this question of, okay, you have this, you have this fear. Are you going to stay where you are? Because what you're doing is not working to, to create what you want. You want kids that like you and want to come around when they're adults, mm -hmm. but what you're doing right now is not working. So are you willing to try something different? Are you willing to prove to your brain that you can do something different to start making that lasting shift? Women are servers. We're givers. And, you know, we hear this all the time as hi, I have to give everything to everyone. And well, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? But we have to get clear and understand 
yeah, but if you're not well, can you serve those people who need you in your greatest capacity? Right. And the answer is no. Right. Yeah. You think, you think you're getting it all done, but things are slipping through and why not be present in your life now? Because it's not guaranteed. It's like the person that works their whole entire life for the time that they can retire and they leave all of the the vision of any pleasure and and it's all pain like um i heard today you can live three different you can live a couple different ways you can live pleasure driven you can live pain driven you can live people driven right people pleasing driven or you can mm-hmm. live purpose driven but be living purpose driven might end you up on a cross for a little while it's not easy there's a crucifixion no. in that but there's a rebirth <laughs> That, yes. you know, and, 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 and that's really the bridge of transformation. You'll change maybe for someone else. I love that person. I love my kids. But you'll change, but like it might not necessarily be for you. And then what happens down right. the road? You get resentful or whatever. It changes. Uh, or your body. And do you even, do you to, like that person? Yeah. Right, right. Exactly. Well, because then the operating system knows how to shift with the new transition, with the Mm. new season, because you're clear on your why, you know what matters to you, and your operating system just says, hey, this is just how I roll. This is just who I am. And so, yeah, I've got the world spinning around me, but I'm going to adapt and shift and move on. One of my clients who has, she's had just a year of pretty much her whole life of chronic low back pain. She's mostly pain-free now, but every once in a while, her back will have a little tweak and she, where it used to set her back up, oh, I can't work out anymore. I can't do anything. The spiral, now it's okay. Yeah, what else can shift, I do? Shift, mm-hmm. I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do something different today, but I'm mm-hmm. still gonna do something to honor my body because mm-hmm. it's just part of her program now. And it's Mm -hmm. such a freeing thing. Like now your health is not this restrictive, like you just got to do this because it's good for you. And you have complete, like you said, you have complete purpose in why you're doing it and where you're going. And now it's, this is what I do because I want to, because this is who I want to be. Right. And there's a totally difference. So let's, you know, before we close up and and figure out, you know, how best to get connected to you, I would just want to jump a couple minutes just on your entrepreneurial journey. And like, so when you're looking back now with the wisdom you have, how was it that you were flipping your pain and found this passion? Like, if you think back, how did you do this? What led to what? What was your why? What ended up being that why where you were finally like, you know what? I am going to jump from the clinic. And and it might have been different things, but like I am going to believe in myself to say, uh, this could be my new way. Like this could be where everything else led to. Terrifying Mm -hmm. because, you know, you have this doctoral degree that you're Mm -hmm. supposed to do it this way because that's what the book says that you're supposed to do. And so to step out of the clinic and still, I was still thinking of what I was supposed to be doing, but I still knew that that was not serving people in the capacity that I wanted to help people. And I also had to set myself up for what do I want my life to look like? Like mm-hmm. I was also leaving the clinic because I didn't want the the grind and the the just intense life of being like having to be in the clinic and having two small children. I knew that that was not a life that I wanted to live. And so I had to look at this. Um, and in this season, it was also a season where I recognized my husband's alcohol addiction that I had to make a choice of, okay, either this marriage is going to work mm-hmm. or it's not. Mm -hmm. who am I going to be no matter what? And I knew I was not going to let addiction pull me down or my children down. And I had to make that choice too. And so, you know, in the back of my head, I was, I was thinking I might end up a single mom here. Mm -hmm. What is that going to look like? Mm -hmm. How, what kind of freedom do I need for my children? If this ends up ending and, you know, I fought long and hard for it. 
but I, I, you know, eventually it came to a point where it was, okay, we got to go. And so I knew what I needed. I knew what my kids were going to need through that season. And so that was such, you know, when we go back to the why it's like, yeah, sure. I want to help people. I want to help. I want to help you change the trajectory of your health and your life. But it also comes from a why of, I knew that I had to be super healthy. I had to be stable mentally, emotionally, and physically. And I had to have the freedom to be able to take care of my kids and the finances to be able to do this all on my own. And that's who I wanted to be. And that's who my boys needed me to be. And so there was no, like, for me, it was like, this is it because I want to be that person. Mm. Yeah. The vision again. And that's so important. Like you said, it's like, it's not selfish because it really is like, we, we're so good at, um, you know, giving from the cup when we really need to be, I don't know where I heard this along the way, but like giving from the saucer, giving from the overflow, you know, like mm. that's how, and that, that's how we should be aiming. Like what, let me do that so that I can stay full and not just busy, but actually fulfilled through my contribution. I think that's been the underlying fight all yeah. the whole entire way, right? Just with women in general, it's like, I don't mind loving my kids. I don't mind being, you know, being in this role or whatever. I actually want to, but I've got to be covered. I've got to be safe. I've got to be allowed to, you know, be treated like a human being. I've got to be respected. I've got, you know, like I'm making a contribution. So, you know, that, yeah. that internal process is always there. Yeah. So and I knew like when, like when I finally decided to sell my house and move, nothing in my life changed. Like it was a terrifying jump to do that. But I remember saying to my mom, I was like, literally nothing in my day changed except that I was no longer an angry mom. Mm. Like I was doing all the stuff in that environment, but I was, I was resentful. I was angry. You know, there should be another human being adults here helping me. And that wasn't happening. So when we moved, I was just doing what we did. Like that's how yeah, we operated with the three of us anyways. Matters. Yeah. But but yeah. I was less tense and grouchy about it. And I think, you know, that flows into like, what's your environment and who are you, who are you shaping yourself to be? And it takes, sometimes it takes those scary things, but to realize like, what do I need? And what does my family need? What are the people, you know, again, we're all really good servers. What are those people that need right. you need your service? who do they need you to be also? Mm -hmm. And understanding, like you said, our operating systems and then other people's operating systems because the other people in our lives will see and view the world from them. <laughs> you know, they're mm -hmm. looking at yeah. you from who they are too. So the better you can be at adapting and kind of, you know, going with the curves and quote unquote curvy hustle living, like the better you can be at doing that, not at sacrifice for yourself, but from really some roots creating, you know, mm -hmm. some stability to stand up in that drift, in that flow that's going on, the better you're going to be. So I love all of that. Tell us how we could, if, if we're listening to this and we're like, okay, I know my foundational health is not there. I hear what you're saying, Tracy. I understand how you said you couldn't do anything until that piece was there. Where is the best place to connect with you and get into limitless health? The best place to connect with me is, would probably be on Instagram. My Instagram is movement.warrior. Okay. And our podcast is called Limitless Health. And we do have a Facebook community, uh, Hardwired for Health, which every morning we're going live with workouts, just ten, just a 10-minute win, you know, to the busy woman who's like, I can't exercise. A 10-minute win with tons of variations and modifications to whatever your body needs. And so those are some great avenues to just start getting connected and shoot me a message. I would love to chat with anyone who's like, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm tired of the start, stop, stuck cycle. Right. So now be warned if you have heard these words out of her mouth, 
you no longer can hide under the shell because it is you just running. Okay, it's you endlessly running, 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 and going nowhere. <laughs> so now you have heard it. You are no longer ignorant, as one of my spiritual teachers always said. You know, you're, you're not going to be punished from the ignorance of life. A two-year-old's not yeah. punished because it doesn't know what a five-year-old does. But once you know, once you know, it's now your responsibility. That is 100% adulting, and we've got to get there if we're expecting the kids to ever get there. So thank you so much, Tracy Hill. Thank you so much for being on here. Um, guys, you. we'll put everything on the show notes. I'll make sure that I get those links, and they'll be on the main show notes over on the Lipson page for owning her health. All right, Tracy, thank you so much. Thank you everyone here and we'll see you next time on Owning Her Health. Thank you for listening into this episode of Owning Her Health with Dr. Lisa Holland, PT. To learn more about her personal and professional development service, visit her online at drlisahollandpt.com. 